In today's 5 at 5, we are asking five questions to Jets General Manager Mike McCagney, who joins us on the phone. We're happy to be a part of his vast media tour today. Uh, Mike, let's talk Christian Hackenberg. When you take a quarterback high in the draft, do you take into account the way the fan base and the market's going to react to it? Because you know, let's be honest, it causes more reaction or a stir uh, than, than any other player or position you would take in the draft. Yeah, I think, Jonas, when you, when you go into the draft, um, you know, in our philosophy, in, in, in the pro side, we always focus on, and I've said this very publicly, and we try to, you know, this is what we try, we try to implement things, but we try to focus on needs and pro free agency, and then when we get to the draft, our focus really is, and I think this, and I can't speak for every NFL team, but we try to take need out of it, and we more or less focus on the best player available, because the draft itself is a, a very tricky process in terms of, you know, it's not quite as, I want to say it's not quite as easy as, but it's a little more more, a little more tricky and difficult than, than pro free agency. Um, but that being said, in the draft, you, you try to focus on taking what you feel is the best player available. Um, it's a little bit of a short and long-term approach. You try to think of you know, what, what's the best investment you can make in a player who has the best upside and who may help you down the road. But when you take him, is there, as part of the equation, hey, people outside this building are going to run with this, that it means something that it may not. Do you at least take that into, you know, in, into this when you're making that selection? I, I know people always want to put it in some kind of context, like, hey, is this a referendum on this or that? And um, No, our approach simply was we felt he was a very good player at that point in time in the draft in terms of being a prospect. And, um, you know, we felt good about taking a chance on him at that point in time. And I think what you realize is, and we discussed this internally, and we've, and we've tried to be fairly transparent with this with everybody else, is, um, you know, he's like every player. I mean, he's you know, they're you know, they're draft picks, and there's a degree of risk in all of them. Um, but uh, but he's a guy that we like, and we like going forward. And I think at the end of the day, um, you know, we even discussed internally the the possibility we may carry four quarterbacks if that's in the best interest of the team going forward. Hmm. Um, you know, because to me, the the quarterbacks, and that's a you know, and, and we're still another thing. I, mean, I know this all ties in together, but I mean, you know, we've we were you know, we're still interested very much in signing fit and that never changed from before the draft to after the draft, and we're still focused on doing that. All right, well, as you said, since it's all intertwined, and knowing how the fan base and everybody's going to react as though you said it's not a referendum, but as you mentioned, the fans might look at it that way. You feel the need to reach out to Ryan Fitzpatrick's people after picking Hackenberg just to reassure to them that he's still important to you and a priority to you? Yeah, yeah, I would say simply, I don't really want to comment on that only because any conversations we, we you know, myself or any of us have had or my, with Ryan or his people, um, you know, that's part of, you know, again, that's something I don't really want to comment or weigh in on. Um, but again, I think they, I think they're aware of our desire to resign Ryan and, and, you know, our interest in that. And we've said this very publicly and we've said this privately. Okay, gotcha. Uh, it's funny, you take a quarterback in the second round and the question about the first rounder comes after. Let's talk there. <laughs> Let's talk. Darren Lee, what does he allow your defense to do with his speed that you couldn't do last year? As Todd Bowles said in the offseason, you guys desperately needed some speed defensively. What does he allow you guys to do that you couldn't do last year? Yeah, so so it's interesting. A little bit after we made the pick, there's some people who are kind of going, oh, yeah, he's a good player, but I don't know how he fits the Jets. And we're like, in our minds, we're like, well, shoot, that's the kind of player we've been, you know, in a perfect world trying to find a type of player like that. So Lee, like any other player, has got to come in here and earn, earn his spot or earn his play time. Um, even if he is a first-round draft pick, it doesn't matter. I mean, that's the way Todd's approaches everything. But he'll he'll play in that that position, the Mo inside linebacker. Um, and what that gives us, basically, or how Todd may you know may use him, is that um, and I think thinking back to Arizona, like you know, I think Todd's one of Todd and Casey Rogers' greatest strengths are both of them from a defensive standpoint is that they really take the players that they have and figure out a way to have them impact the most. And what Lee brings to us is a very athletic inside linebacker that has like literally sideline to sideline range. You just exercise the fifth-year option on Sheldon Richardson. With the salary cap the way it is, and we know it influences almost everything in today's game, can you envision having Sheldon and Muhammad Wilkerson on this team long-term because so many fans talk about it's either one or the other because of the cap. Can you envision having both of them long-term? Is that a possibility? Well, I, I think it's definitely a possibility. I, I wouldn't necessarily rule anything out. I mean, the cap 
and is you know projected to go up uh, again next year. And then you know as as the new money comes into the you know the NFL as a whole, the, the cap only gets bigger and bigger. It seems like so. Um, but no, I, I I don't think anything would necessarily be ruled out. There's no ultimatum of one or the other kind of thing. So I mean, it's all you know it depends on the deals you do and and how you structure them. And um, but I don't think one would preclude the other. Mike, we appreciate a few minutes. Thank you so much. Good luck. We'll speak to you as we get closer to training camp. Anytime, Jonas. You have a very good day now.